What is up everyone, Nick here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to build your very own stratagem ball from Helldivers 2 with lights and sounds. So for this project, we're going to be using the 3D models for the stratagem beacon by Maker Lab. Now the documentation for the stratagem beacon by Maker Lab is very, very thorough. It shows wiring diagrams, it even includes which files need to be printed in which colors, and how to assemble it with the hardware required. But we're going to be building it slightly differently. So the original Maker Lab stratagem ball was built with analog wiring diagrams. So you had a button on the bottom to be able to change between blue LEDs and red LEDs, and the button on the top was your kill switch to be able to turn it on and off. And it ran on simple AAA batteries. But for this stratagem ball, we're going to be using a custom PCBI design to control RGB lights. And on top of that, we're going to have a sound effect for every time the LEDs turn on. And if that wasn't enough, we also have a built-in charging module inside, that way we can charge it via USB-C. I'm going to include some close-ups of the stratagem ball in the video, but if I remove this cover, there is a little kill switch right next to the Arduino Nano, which I can turn on. And once that is turned on, I can just put the cover back on. And then all I have to do is press the button on the top, we get the sound effect and we get a red light. Most likely the red light doesn't come across very well because of the big light I have here. But if I turn it off and hold the button for two seconds, it's going to change the red light to a blue light. Now, if I let go and press it again, we get a blue light for a support stratagem. And we still get that neat sound effect. So let me just turn this off and turn off the PCB and let's get to building this. So if you follow the documentation by Maker Lab, 3D printing this is going to be an absolute breeze. Most of the parts require minimal supports and every single color you see here is its own part, meaning there's no painting required if you don't want to. So that way you can 3D print all the parts without needing a multi-material unit to 3D print in multicolor. Now there's one thing we're not going to be 3D printing from the Maker Lab files and that's the battery mount. Instead, we're going to be 3D printing a modified battery mount as well as a PCB mount that I designed and I'll include a link to the Thingiverse page in the description that way you can download it and 3D print it yourself. Namely, we're going to be using the 10 by 4 millimeter magnets for the battery cover at the bottom and we're also going to be using two of these 8 by 8 buttons. Now the one difference is we're not going to be using the self-locking buttons. We're going to be using the non-locking buttons. I'll leave a link in the description to where I got all of the hardware. That way you don't need to find it yourself. And lastly, you're going to need a few of these black screws here. Again, links in the description. You're not going to need any of the blue or red LEDs. For the lights, we're going to be using a NeoPixel ring. Specifically, we're going to be using a NeoPixel ring with 12 RGB lights on it. Again, links are in the description. Now, some of the hardware I'm talking about, I don't have visuals for because, well, I already built the stratagem ball, but all the purchase links are going to be in the description, so you don't really need to worry about that. One other component you're going to need is the speaker itself to play the sound effects. The one I used already came with the JST XH connector, so we don't need to worry about crimping that onto the speaker. But the button and the NeoPixel ring we're going to be using do need wires for JST XH connectors to connect to the PCB. So one other thing you're going to need to buy are some JST XH connectors. You're going to need a three wire JST XH connector and a two wire JST XH connector. The two pin is going to be for the button and the three pin is going to be for the RGB light because we need a ground, a positive, and we need a digital input for that RGB light. Now you can either crimp your own wires and connectors or you can buy pre-crimped sets online. And you're also going to need the female connectors themselves for the PCB. So you're going to need two two-pin JSTXH connectors for the PCB and one three-pin JSTXH connector. Now for the hardware on the PCB itself. Number one, we're going to need our Arduino Nano. This is what we're going to be uploading our code onto. So this is the brains of the operation. I highly recommend you buy the Elogu clones that are available on Amazon. They work extraordinarily well and they're fairly priced in my opinion. Next up, we're going to need a DF Player Mini. This is basically our MP3 player that's going to be playing the sound effect. And you're also going to need a 16 gigabyte SD card. So we're going to be uploading our sound file onto this. I'll be leaving a link to a GitHub page in the description so you can get the sound file and the code for this. Honestly, there's not much to say about uploading the file onto the SD card. You just download the file from GitHub, upload it onto the SD card, eject the SD card, and plug it back into the DF Player Mini, and you're done. We're also going to be using a vertical USB-C connector. And since this is vertical, it's going to be much easier to plug into to charge the LiPo. I also have this teeny tiny kill switch here, which we're going to be soldering onto the board itself. This is going to allow us to turn the circuit on and off. Now again, I don't have this component with me because it's already in the stratagem ball, but we're going to need a Adafruit LiPo charger. I feel like the name is pretty self-explanatory, 
explanatory. This is what's going to allow us to charge our LiPo battery. Now, this is not to scale because it's not the battery we're going to be using for this project, but this is essentially what a LiPo battery looks like, or at least the one we're going to be using for this project. And we're also going to need a 1K ohm resistor, which is surface mount, which we're going to be soldering onto the PCB. And last but not least is the PCB itself. So this is the component we're going to be soldering most of the hardware onto, and this PCB is going to attach itself onto the modified battery mount. That way, when we open this up, we have perfect access to the PCB, to the charging port, and to the kill switch. And you can get this PCB in the description from this channel sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay, if you don't know it already, is the industry leader when it comes to PCB manufacturing and 3D printing solutions. From custom circuit boards to innovative 3D printed prototypes, PCBWay offers unparalleled quality, fast turnaround times, and competitive pricing. So with the 3D prints covered, the hardware covered, we can move on to the first step of building this. And that's going to be the coding itself. So we're going to grab our Arduino Nano as well as a micro USB cable that's compatible with it and we're going to open up Arduino IDE on our computer. So once we've copied the code from the GitHub page, we can paste it in a brand new sketch in Arduino IDE and now we have the entirety of the code here. If we scroll up, we'll see that we have all the different inputs for the pins. So the button pins on pin 2, NeoPixels on pin 3, the number of pixels we have 12, the RX pin is 10 and the TX pin for the DF player is 11. So with the code being here, we can now start working on installing our libraries. So we're going to need Adafruit NeoPixel.h and we're going to need DF Robot DF Player Mini.h. So for this, we can go to Tools and Manage Libraries. From here, we can type in the names of the two libraries and install them. So if I start with Adafruit NeoPixel, it's right here. I need to update it, but that's fine. It'll, it'll work just fine for now. And then same thing for DF Robot, DF Player Mini, type it in and it pops up right here. Now, once these two libraries are installed, we can start working on uploading our code. So right now I have an Arduino Nano selected on COM5. I'm going to plug in my Arduino and we can see it pops up right here on COM5. If you need to modify which board is being selected, we can just type it right here and we can select the correct USB port right here. And with that done, we can just hit upload. Now it is compiling the sketch, it's uploading, and it's already done uploading. Now, if we wanna test the Arduino in the IDE, we can go to serial monitor, make sure we have the correct baud rate selected, and as you can see, DF player mini not detected because, well, it's not connected, which is fine but we can start messing around with the button pins. We can grab a jumper cable and we can connect that jumper cable to the ground pin and to pin two. And when we do that, we should get an input in the serial monitor. And as you can see, I am triggering the button. So the NeoPixel is on and off, on and off. And if I hold the two contacts together for two seconds, it's going to switch to blue. And again, I can spam it on and off, on and off. And now we know that our Arduino is actually working properly. So usually when I'm prototyping and working on a project like this, I like to test out my electronics on a breadboard first before I actually start soldering onto the PCB. Because one, it gives me a chance to make sure that the electronics are working properly and to troubleshoot anything that might not be currently working before I confirm the design of my PCB. And it's also a way to make sure that the code is properly running on the Arduino Nano. At least I know for a fact that my code is running properly before moving on to soldering everything to the PCB. So I know this kind of looks like a jumble of wires because, well, it kind of is. But right here, we have two little wires which are going to my DF Player Mini, which is right here with the SD card, um, which are attached to the speaker, and that's attached to the first pins right here for speaker positive and speaker negative. And then the last three pins right here on the DF Player Mini, that's for the RX, the TX communication, and the power input. And for the power input, I just have this blue wire right here connected to the five volt on the Arduino Nano. And the two pins for RX and TX are connected to pins 10 and 11 on the Arduino. Then I have this jumble of wires right here, which is for the NeoPixels. I already soldered a JST connector to the NeoPixel ring, and I just have some wires connected directly into the JST that goes into the breadboard. So I have the power wire going to the five volt. I have the digital pin going to, what is it? Pin three on the Arduino. And then I have a ground pin just stuck onto one of the ground pins on the Arduino. And lastly, I have these two wires right here for the button. 
Now the button is connected to pin two and to a ground. So with all these connections made, all I need is a micro USB cable to plug into my Arduino and a power supply to power everything. And now we can test and see if our electronics work. So if I press the button, we get our sound effect and our NeoPixels go red. And if I click it again, it turns off. And then if I hold it for two seconds, one, two, and I press it again, we get the blue light and we get that sound effect again. And this is completely repeatable. I can turn it on and off as much as I like and switch the colors as much as I like too. So uh, now we can disassemble this and get rid of all the wires and we can start soldering up our components individually onto the PCB. So I'm gonna start the process of soldering up our JSTXH connector for the RGB light. I'm gonna solder all three ends and then I'm gonna solder those ends onto the digital input ground and the 5 volt input on the RGB ring. And then I'm going to solder up the button. We want to make sure that we solder up the left pin and the middle pin onto our two leads for the JSTXH connector. It should look something a little bit like this once you're done. Now we're finally going to start soldering up our PCB. The first thing we're going to solder to the PCB is the 1K ohm resistor. And then I'm immediately going to start soldering up the USB-C port. First, I'm gonna turn it upside down just to add a little bit of solder to the connectors. And then I'm gently going to solder all the pads for the USB-C port. There are six and you wanna be very careful not to add too much solder. Usually when soldering surface mount parts like this, you wanna use solder paste, but I'm an idiot, so I'm just going to be using my soldering iron instead. And finally, we can move on to soldering the kill switch. Once again, I'm applying a little bit of pressure with my finger just so I can make sure the part is properly aligned and then I can go back in and add proper amounts of solder to each pin. Now I'm gonna use these pin headers to solder our LiPo charger directly onto the PCB. So I'm going to use the breadboard as support. I have some headers directly underneath the Arduino Nano pins to keep the PCB level, and I'm going to apply solder to the four pins on the LiPo charger with pin headers. And before we go any further, just make sure you apply solder to the pads that say 500 MA. This is going to make sure that our battery charges correctly since we're using a battery that is bigger than 500 milliamp hours. Then I'm gonna flip it upside down and I'm gonna start removing the plastic from the pin headers and trimming down the pin headers to the correct length. And once they are the correct length, I'm going to use my helping hands to keep it properly aligned with the screw holes. And then we can test everything by using an LED going from the five volt pin to the ground pin and plugging in our battery. And as you can see, everything is working. Now we can start soldering up our DF Player Mini. You wanna make sure that it's oriented the correct direction. And now we can just trim off the excess pin headers and apply a little bit of solder and then solder up the rest of the pins. And we can do the exact same thing for the Arduino Nano. And lastly, we can solder up our JSTXH connectors. And now that we have it fully assembled, all we need to do is install the SD card plug in the button into this port. Why not just do the battery, NeoPixels, and the speaker. Now we can flip it on, it boots on. Then if we press the button, get our sound effect, NeoPixels go red. If I press it again, it turns off, and again turns back on, and again off. And if I hold it for two seconds, we get the blue light and now it's in the blue light mode, and then we can swap in between this and the red as much as we want. And then if I wanna turn it off, I can just flip the switch and it's off. And instead of using this micro USB port, which is on the Adafruit LiPo charger, which is obstructed by the button, we can use the USB-C port that's right here to charge. Actually, speaking of which, let me test that right now by unplugging my camera and plugging it in here. So the red light turns on, which means it's charging, so it does indeed work. Cool. So let's get to assembling the stratagem ball and installing all of our electronics inside. So for the first step of assembly, we're going to take our PCB mount and we're gonna grab our PCB and we're gonna start screwing it all down. So you're gonna use the tiny M2 machine screws to screw directly into the plastic. And then we're gonna use the M2.5 screws to screw down the LiPo charger part of the PCB. And now we can take our modified battery mount, apply a little bit of glue, and glue on our PCB mount directly to it. 
Then grab the battery, apply a little bit of glue to it, or you can grab an elastic and glue that to the modified PCB mount. And we're going to glue it directly behind the modified battery mount. So now we're gonna work on the top half of the stratagem ball. So we're gonna take the main piece, the three light diffusers, the button, and the button mount, as well as the button that we soldered up. So we're gonna glue the light diffusers, starting with the smallest one inside, and then we're gonna grab the bigger of the light diffusers and glue that too onto the main piece of the stratagem ball. Now we can grab our RGB light and we can apply a little bit of glue, we don't need to use a lot, onto some of the lights. That way we can glue it directly onto the bigger light diffuser. Make sure that this is properly oriented and centered with the hole. Now we can grab our button mount and glue in the button into it. And once that's glued down, we can also glue the tiny light diffuser into the main button. And now we can just drop this into the center of the stratagem ball. And once that's in place, we can twist up our three pin JST connector to feed it through the hole. Now both of our wires should be sticking out of these two holes on the button mount and we can screw it down to the main piece of the stratagem ball. Now we're going to grab our PCB mount, we're going to feed it inside of the main piece of the stratagem ball and we're also going to attach the top half so we can use some glue to glue that down. Just make sure that your wire leads are long enough. And now we can install the speaker so we can plug that into the JST connector, apply a little bit of glue behind the speaker itself, and then we can glue down the speaker on the inner wall of the stratagem ball. And once everything is functional and aligned, we can also screw down the PCB mount into place. And now we can take the bottom half and start assembling that. So we can grab the button piece, put it inside, glue down the button into the button mount, and then screw that down as well. This button isn't going to be actually used, but it is going to keep the button piece under tension so it's not constantly flopping around. And then we just need to screw down this whole assembly. And lastly, we get to glue down every single little detail piece. So I'm gonna apply a bunch of glue and slowly but surely glue everything down. And once those are glued down, we can glue down the gold pieces. These can be glued down to the silver piece and the gunmetal piece. And now we just need to glue down our magnets. Make sure that the polarities are facing the correct direction, that way the magnets actually work as intended. If you flip the poles in the wrong direction, they're not going to want to stick to each other, so make sure the polarities are properly aligned. And then we can glue down the last of our little greebles. Make sure that you only apply glue onto the silver piece, that way the lid is still removable. And as you can see, it very much still is. We have completed our stratagem ball. Everything's glued down, all the electronics are installed. Now all we have to do is try it out. And with all that said and done, you should have yourself a fully functional stratagem ball. So if we press the button, we get that red light and the sound effect, and if we press it again and hold down on it, that'll cycle to the blue light, so if I turn it off and turn it back on again, we get the blue light. And that pretty much covers everything. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any specific questions about building the stratagem ball, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, maybe some more Helldivers 2 props I could build, I would love to hear them. Another huge thank you goes out to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and for sponsoring the channel on a whole. And I will see you all in the next one. Hua! <laughs>